All right, guys, so it's a beautiful day today. It's raining underneath the deck. We have like a little tent thing, so I'm in the dry area, but the tent stops right there, as you can see. So that's full of water. Uh, working on a retaining wall here. Um, that was my other post for the laser level. Never built a retaining wall before. Uh, you gotta dig down to make sure one of the timber, the first timber is underground. So I dug down and um, basically dug down where I wanted my timber and then went down about another four inches. Um, four to six inches of gravel is typically what you need. And then we, we put in some drainage rock in the bottom of the trench, tamped it down tight, got it nice and perfectly level with the, with the laser level like I showed in the other thing. I basically used what's called a grade stick. So I just set the laser level up over here. I started at the end with my, um, this is literally just a scrap two by four, put a mark on it where the laser level hit and then worked my way all the way across and made sure that that uh, laser was right on that mark all the way across to make sure that this perfect this first timber was perfectly level laid it into place kind of tamped it around got it level front to back side to side all right so got my headlamp here i wanted to show you this step here working my way up the wall you can see where i pinned in the dead men into the wall there so i did two pieces of rebar i drilled into the concrete wall and pinned it in there and then i put a piece of rebar and a um timber lock down into there that keeps the wall from tipping out like that the weight of the wall on this side will keep it from tipping that way plus as we've been going stepping up this hill i dig out probably another 18 inches and i fill that little hole with gravel about four to five inches of gravel get it nice and flat then i put my next timber down and then i put two pieces of rebar two foot long pieces of rebar all the way down in each end and then as i go here I put timber locks in the six by sixes as I go down. All right, so the big part of the retaining wall is done. Um, I've got to, I'm gonna take probably that piece right there and just sort of add it right there. Um, I think it's I think it's the right length to just create a barrier because my kids push the gravel down the down the hill, and so I'm gonna add this right there. So here's what we did. You can you can see I've said in the other videos with the gravel, so I've got landscape fabric. Um, as I went up this hill, I just sort of stepped it and the next board I dug out for the next one and then the next one. And I made sure I went back at least a foot. The only time I couldn't go any further back was right here. The other board ends right there because whenever they poured this footing for this deck post, basically the post is mounted all the way on the edge of it and the, the concrete goes all the way back to like right in here so a lot of concrete um so the timber wall is done um as you can see here i've got a dead man here so that comes back and there's a t in there and i've got two timber lock screws and then i also put a two foot piece of rebar drilled it all the way through and then i drilled a hole there for a two foot piece of rebar and then i've got two pieces of rebar there the reason I didn't put another one here is because there's a drainage, corrugated drainage pipe that runs right down, right in there somewhere, right in this area. So I didn't want to put another, put a spike through it. So you got the rebar in there. And then as we fill this area with, I'm going to backfill all of this with um, what's called 57 stone, uh, which is like basically that gravel there. It's essentially like a three quarter inch to one inch uh, gravel, uh, uh, washed gravel. So it doesn't have fines in it is what they're called. Um, and it, um, it's my drainage rock and then I'm going to backfill this whole area with that gravel. The gravel truck's actually on its way right now. I ordered, uh, six tons of gravel, which based on my calculation should be enough to fill this area. I hope. Um, so yeah, we got six tons coming and, um, you can see here I put two dead men there. Each of those dead men has a pin, has a one foot long uh, rebar, a half inch rebar pin that goes into the concrete. So I used a SDS, like a Bosch uh, SDS hammer drill. And I drilled um, two, uh, two holes into the concrete and pinned these dead men into the concrete. So any force from the wall is just gonna pull against those pins and there's two per block. And then each one is, um, pinned in with rebar 
and um, I've got a timber lock in there. And then as you can see here, as you build the wall, you kind of sort of stair step it up a little bit, coming back about a half inch or so each time. And as I went, I sort of made it square as I went up um, to make sure each course was square to the house and, and, and this particular corner here to make sure that was square. Um, and then I didn't really put any dead men this way. In hindsight, I'm thinking I probably should have put one, but I think it'll be fine because you have this wall pulling this way and because this goes up a hill this isn't a full height wall it's essentially only like a half of a wall um so i think it'll be fine in terms of pressure plus as we pack this gravel in the gravel will hold itself together too um so i think it should be fine um but yeah i'm gonna backfill this whole area with gravel here and then we're going to maybe come on top of it with some pea pebbles on top i haven't decided yet if I do that, I'll put a layer of fabric down and then put the pea pebbles down over top of that so that the pea pebbles don't migrate down into the um, 57 stone. And then I've got a few more timbers there. I'm gonna build a little retaining wall here in the back on this side, just to sort of flatten this little section out. Uh, I do need to figure out how deep my drainage pipe is. I put that in many years ago and I, it's somewhere, it runs right underneath the deck, kind of comes off the corner of the house runs right down here, runs all the way down there and comes out down there. And then this particular one Ys into it and they dump off there at the bottom of the lot. So um, that's kind of the wall. These are all six by six timbers. Uh, this is nine feet essentially by nine feet that way. Right, well, it's eight feet, six inches to that point. I had to cut that one off just a little bit. Um, but that's basically it. I think my total cost in this whole wall is like right around a thousand dollars, I think, right around a grand, uh, with all the gravel and all the timbers and the screws and all the other stuff. Uh, that does not include my, you know, chiropractor bill and stuff like that for shoveling all this dirt and rock. But, um, I have a weekly plan with him anyway, so we won't consider that a cost. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to put a little piece there just to level off that area so this stone doesn't keep going down the hill. And then we'll, we'll, we're just going to level this whole area out and gravel it all so we've got a nice usable space here. Um, we might even move the kids' um, sandbox. Oh, for, it's up there on the deck right over there. I might actually move it down here underneath the deck so they can play in sandbox under here. So that's what we're going to do. And then I've got all this extra stuff I dug out here. I'm going to actually just sort of backfill that up against the wall here, uh, put in a little bit of gravel along the bottom here. Um, and then I'll just fill this and kind of slope it. And then we'll, I'll put some plants and some pine straw here. Um, once I'm all done, I'll, I'll put some more hosta under here and I'll do the same thing right here. I purposely didn't like last spring, we did a lot of landscaping along this bank here. I put in some hydrangeas and some hosta and stuff like that on this bank. Um, purposely, I didn't do this area here because I knew I was going to be doing this retaining wall and making a mess of this area. So now that this retaining wall is done, I'll probably add some more plants in here and call it a day. And then the next project is to tackle all of this stuff. I'm, I'm thinking maybe having my uh, neighbor come out here. He's in the landscape business. He has a forestry mulcher on his skid steer and maybe just grind up all this stuff here and just make a bunch of mulch. We had to take a lot of trees down. We had a lightning strike there, and then we had a bunch of trees that had pine bark, uh, pine beetle damage. Uh, so I had to take down back in the uh, late summer, early fall, I had to take down, uh, I think I took down, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 trees, 15 trees. It's took on 15 pine trees over here. So we got to get that taken care of next. And then eventually we're going to grade this area out down here, cut into the hill and flatten out a little section and a little bowl down here. Um, and then uh, make this a little bit flatter of an area. I can't do anything with this part of my yard here because my septic uh, tank drain field, my septic tank's right up there at the hill. And then the drain field all runs out there uh, in this area. So I can't touch that. And then eventually I'm going to build a little retaining wall up there by the kids swing set. So and level out that area so they've got a little bit more level area to play with.
right, so now we're on the shitty part of the job, which is backfilling with gravel. I had uh, six tons of gravel delivered. This is uh, what's called 57 stone. Um, it's a drainage rock, 57 stone. Um, and I, uh, I mean, it's basically the same stuff there that you buy in bags, but I did the math and in, in buying the bags, each bag is a half a cubic foot of, um, gravel and the bags are about eh, a little under $5 a bag, um, with tax. Okay. And there are 27 cubic yards. Okay. 27 cubic yards in, um, I'm sorry, 27 cubic feet in a cubic yard. So if you do the math, that works out to actually be like $250 a, um, 250 bucks a yard to buy gravel. Um, I bought this stuff by the ton, same gravel, um, in bulk, had the uh, Green Brothers come deliver it. They dropped it off and dumped it at the top of the driveway. Unfortunately, the shitty part about my situation is I live on a slope. You can see I'm destroying my yard here. Um, I attempted to use some six inch landscape pipe to create a gravel, a gravel chute, but it's not steep enough and the gravel gets stuck in the pipe and it doesn't go down. So that was a failure. I'm going to have to shovel it wheelbarrow by wheelbarrow down here. I could bring a skid steer down here, but again, with the slope and everything, I don't know. I'm on the fence about it because I'll tear up the yard with the skid steer. I mean, I can always reseed, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe in a little bit, I might think about it. But anyways, um, I'm backfilling here with the 57 stone. I'm bringing in um, load by load. We fill about a half a wheelbarrow full. It's too heavy if you load it all the way to the top. It's one thing with wheelbarrows, you don't want to get too heavy. And um, then I'll dump a load, spread it out, basically dump two loads, spread it all out evenly, and then I'll compact it here with this tamper. Uh, this stuff is pretty relatively self-compacting, um, but I mean, when I'm tamping this down, it's maybe tamping down like a quarter of an inch or something. Not really much, but you just want to lock it all together um, here once you tamp it down. Um, you can use a vibratory compactor like a jumping jack or, or a vibratory plate compactor if you wanted to. Honestly, this area, I'm not really trying to make it perfect. I don't plan on, like, setting pavers under here where I need a perfectly, like, flat and perfect surface. I'm literally just going to gravel everything under here. Um, it'll drain really well. It'll give me a flat level surface to, you know, sit on, work on, stand on, whatever out here. So that's fine. I don't need it to be perfect, so I'm not worried about... If it settles out a little bit over time, so be it. Not a big deal. As long as it's relatively flat, that's all I care about. So, what's up, buddy? Daddy. What, Cart Mason? Watch okay. My son wants to go build Legos, so I'm going to take a break for a little bit, eat some lunch, go build some Legos. We're going to backfill this a little bit, so I'll push some of this dirt, shovel it around, smooth it up, put a landscape bed along this area right here. And then we'll just keep moving gravel down here slowly but surely, filling this. It'll basically fill it all the way. As you can see, I'm going to kind of bring it level with that concrete pad there. So it'll be just on the bottom side of that board, which if you do the carry that across, essentially it'll probably be a couple inches um, from, the, from the top of this piece here. So we'll bring the gravel up within a couple inches there. And again, I think I said in another video, I'm going to put a 6x6 six six across right here. Um, just to retain some of this gravel to keep it from going down the hill because my kids tend to want to push it down the hill. As you can see, it just sort of migrates down the hill. So so that's what we're doing here. This is the shitty part of the job. Um, I, I don't remember if I talked about this in the other video, but literally, I think I'm all in this whole project for maybe $1,000, $1,200 in materials. Um, but now I've got to shovel all this gravel and it's cold outside and... It's not fun shoveling gravel and my back is already hurting and I've literally only shoveled like that much. Uh, and as I go higher in here, it will fill less and less. I, I've made a lot of progress in here. This equivalent is probably one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, probably 
15 wheelbarrow loads so far have filled me all the way up to the one, two, three, third course up here. So I've gone up uh, 15 inches.